Pen Made by Here with our Rolex. Welcome back to Pen Made Minor. This week we're going to talk about Nickelodeon's surprising smash success, The Miraculous Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Now this series was based off an anime PV that happened a few years back and I was really excited about it at the time. And then I heard its uh, full series run would be entirely dependent on a French made CG TV series. And in my mind I was like, oh, the, the CG series just doesn't look as good. I'm really upset about that. Uh, well, I decided to give the CG series a shot, and now when I watch the anime PV, I'm like, oh, the anime PV just doesn't look as good. I guess I just kind of got used to the characters. But that being said, the show has a lot of heart, and it's really interesting. And while you can tell that they were under a, a pretty strict deadline to get that stuff out, uh, in fact, go ahead and check out this cartoon by uh, Joltoid. Uh, I believe it's Joltoid. Uh, if not, Kirk can just overdub me. It's made by Jello Apocalypse. Uh, so yeah, um, go and check that out if you've already watched uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the series has had its full run in English aired in Australia. It's had all of its episodes aired in Korea and France. And somehow in America, we're still only at like episode 12 or 13. Nickelodeon, what are you thinking? Are you just hoping that the ghost of Avatar rises from the grave and somehow saves you again? Come on, put out new stuff. You can only make SpongeBob for so long, people. You gotta make new stuff. That being said, I don't know if I would call Ladybug amazing writing right out of the box. But what I will say is when I watch new shows, I watch the show half based off what I'm seeing and half off the potential I see for the future. I write my own scripts in my head, ideas of what these characters could do in the future, things I think would still be practical for the team to create, cost effective, and easy enough on the writing staff that I think they could pull it off. I think of plot twists in advance, and judging based on that, I imagine how interesting the show could become from here. Uh, it gives you a little bit of insight into how I view things, and I see the potential of Ladybug to be very, very high. I also saw potential in things like Steven Universe. And, uh, well, sometimes I see potential in things and then they just, they just let me down. But when shows manage to succeed, I stand up and cheer. And I see potential in Ladybug, and I'm hoping they don't let me down. Well, let me tell you what I see. First, I see they've got a remarkably charming cast of characters. Every character in her school is interesting and unique in their own way. Her family is unique and interesting. Her home is different. It provides a unique battle setting because you don't see many battles taking place on the street of France, uh, at least not in modern shonen slash shoujo combo stories, which this one is definitely both. Um, they have some pretty unconventional villains, too, because the villains have to be the negative aspects of people that you kind of grow to understand, and because of that, villains never truly vanish. Now, we've seen shows do this in the past with things like Sailor Moon and, well, pretty much all the Magical Girl shows that, you know, corrupt someone and let them become a themed villain of the week, but very rarely do they keep those characters around and continue to elaborate on them both before they become a villain and after they are saved. It creates uh, some potential drama for down the line. That being said, this definitely has its limitations. As of the end of the first season, they've pretty much made their way through her entire class roster. I honestly don't know why the police don't show up to Ladybug and Cat Noir school every day, because every kid in her class has been infected by an Akuma at this point, and no one's asking any questions. Where are the police? They're also definitely paying service to the brand. It's a magical girl style show, and it shows. But that being said, you get all the charm and uh, unique honesty that comes with that kind of show as well. So it's not all bad. Paying service to the brand only makes it a little bit predictable sometimes. But I would say that's not always a bad thing. Also, like I said, there was a time crunch. You can tell they made these episodes fast. They have to reuse a lot of settings. They have to reuse a lot of characters. Especially since it's a good looking CG show. They spent a lot of money making the CG Eiffel Tower and making it a battle location. They're going to want to use it more than once. They're, they're going to want to get their money out of it. I mean, someone made a CG rock star with a pet alligator. They're going to want to get their money for that. So yeah, he's going to show up a few times at least in the first season. Uh, but it also kind of takes a strain on the writing when they keep having to reuse 
the children's TV studio over and over again, and Marinette's school over and over again. But that being said, the cool thing about CG shows is once they've created those assets, they live forever in their library, which means the more they make, the more they can make suddenly the easier it'll be that the, for them to create a school library because they already have one stock. They can just edit it to fit their new scene. And that means more time can be spent making the animations look stellar or making the characters look more perfect or making sure the writing is really snapped up. And you can feel that in a lot of the emotional dialogue, especially late in the season, where you can feel some of the real heart of the characters come shining through and maybe that's because they had enough time to do it. Even in the time crunch, those time-saving measures save them. Lastly, of course, it's still a kid's show, and it fits the mold. Episodic. Uh, you're going to have the status quo come back at the end of everything. But you know what? I would argue that even Steven Universe had a lot of episodic episodes at first, and it found its way out of it. Things like Gravity Falls suffered the same fate. But you know what? It still managed to tell a good overarching story. It just took time getting there. I see that potential here with Ladybug, that we could have some really dramatic, interesting stories, especially if they get some multi-episode arcs in the second season that could really stretch our heartstrings and make us fear for the characters. It could be really cool. I mean, think about even shows like Buffy, that people just say, oh, don't watch the first season. It gets really good after that. Well, you know, if you don't like Ladybug now, come back and try season two. You never know if it might change. What would I do if I was writing season two? Well, I'll go ahead and tell you, first things first, I would grow and expand the world and the cast of characters as much as possible. And I would probably start this off by introducing a true cast of villains. Hawk Moth is a great episode of the week villain because he just kind of makes new bad guys, but he would be more interesting as an anti-hero, someone who kind of works with Ladybug and Cat Noir when he has to, as opposed to someone who's truly just a, a mustache twirler. It'd be more interesting to see him reluctantly helping people because it serves his end goals. And that way they can give him some true anti-hero room to play with. If there was some really engaging villains out there, it would also highlight the fact that the different miraculous work differently and that depending on who gets them, different things happen. And many people online have already touched on this, but I think... Uh, Cat Noir's best friend Nino would make a great inheritor of the Turtle Miraculous from the Hermit. I think that, that would give him a lot of insight. Nino already shows a great degree of wisdom and sagehood about him, and I think that would be fantastic. And I think Alia should inherit the Fox Miraculous, the real one, not the, the fake one. She could fight her faker, and she could take her place at Ladybug's side. It would be interesting. Not really a sidekick, per se, but something else entirely. At least, those are potential growth arcs for those characters. Alia does have a penchant for wisdom, so she could also embrace the turtle, and maybe Nina could embrace the fox and really pull a switcheroo on us. The last thing I would do is I would use that time after developing new villains and, you know, gaining a little bit of space from having so much of Paris already fleshed out to really grow the relationships of the characters. We get a lot of the tropes, we get a lot of those things, but you can't forget your characters need just room to breathe and express their emotions and who they are, at least if you want to grow into something that's bigger than what you already have. So I really hope that Ladybug continues to live up to the potential I see in it and become something truly fantastic in Season 2 and beyond. Do you guys see the same potential in Ladybug? Do you guys think I'm just off my rocker? Do you love Ladybug as it is and think it doesn't need to grow? Feel free to talk about it in the comments below or just uh, suggest something else for us to discuss here on Pen Made Mightier. I thank you for sticking with us. Have a great rest of the week. Bye. Pen made by Tia with our roars.